next on Good Taste. Kick up your heels and your taste buds at a cool country hangout that rocks prime rib and rolls out an irresistible eggnog pie. Just wish I could get a little whiskey in there. She serves up inspiration in the kitchen, but this enchilada queen is also a shining example of what it takes to persevere and survive. I remember one of the first thoughts I had in that instant was, oh my gosh, is this, is this how I'm going to die? The joy of good food, <laughs> laughter, and lots of love. We're just all on this ship going together, so uh, <laughs> behave. From a mother-daughter duo that does breakfast right. Good Taste starts right now. Hi everyone, welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. In the mood for something new? How about a fabulous date night destination with live music, really good souped up comfort food? Sound good? Grab your honey and dust off your dancing shoes. We're heading to O'Brien's. The first thing you need to know about O'Brien's restaurant, it's a good time. Live music routinely rocks this roadside grub hub, where you can kick up your heels on Friday night, meet up with friends, I saw uh, or make new ones. We're here once or twice a week. Then you can chow down on some of the tastiest kicked up country food in the hill country. The food's great, but the people are even better. It's like cheers. If you come in here and you don't know somebody, I'm shocked. <laughs> You're new in town. <laughs> Fifteen years ago, restaurant veteran Tim O'Brien got this wild idea to open up a little place out in the country. It's such a fun place. What did you envision, Tim, when you decided to open O'Brien? And we were just going to do a little hamburger thing, and then people started coming in going, what do you mean you're only going to have hamburgers? We want steaks and everything. I said, well, okay. He convinced his newly retired wife to come join the fun. When he talked you into coming into the business, having just retired, did you think, oh, I'll spend an hour or two here, there? Oh, yeah, start, oh, an hour. Oh, this is easy, this is easy. And now it's like every day. The O'Briens heard this vintage gas station, once used in Steven Spielberg's first film, Sugarland Express, was up for grabs. They jumped on the opportunity and did all the renovations themselves. In fact, this wall back here, you see, all that old wood came off my corral. And then some of the wood that's up in the bar came off the original cotton gin that was built back in the 1800s. This place is Texas all the way, with bits and pieces of Wild West nostalgia. I love O'Brien's. They created something special all right. O'Brien's is packed every weekend, especially when Rick Cavender's band is on the bill. Rolling on Texas time. We love this place. It's been so fun because people are following us here, which is really nice. And uh, when we play, the word gets out. And uh, we've, had, we've had a lot of fun here. Do what locals do and start in the bar with a specialty martini, like this hill country peach creation, or the dreamy desperate housewife martini. Mm. Chocolate. Then dive into a delicious dinner where everything and I mean everything is made from scratch. You can come for the comfort food of burgers and chicken fried chicken or chicken fried steak. He's talking about O'Brien's award-winning chicken fried steak. That meaty mouthful practically fills up the plate. And you can come in here and get a, a cup of soup or you can get prime rib. That prime rib is certified Angus beef bathed in a garlic herb butter sell out every time they serve it. We also have a wonderful 24 ounce uh, ribeye. Oh, good lord. Yeah. So one person? It's a bone-in cowboy. We sold nine of them last night. Seafood lovers, the grilled salmon is a crowd favorite. It's glazed with a zesty honey chipotle sauce. From the get-go, O'Brien's has been a family affair. You're in charge of the fun thing. The, the desserts. desserts. Yes. yes. Daughter Trisha whips up all the homemade desserts, and there's lots of them. Trisha's luscious treats also include something we've never seen before, eggnog pie. Now that is really good. Just wish I could get a little whiskey in there. 
Well, why can't you? I'll try that next time. <laughs> and we just love the food. Locals love Tim's chicken artichoke dish and the very popular chicken piccata. Easy to make at home. This dish starts with a butterfly chicken breast. And you don't want to you don't want to make a roadkill out of it. You want to just kind of you know just even it up so it cooks evenly. Right. It's dredged in a seasoned flour. Then it's slid into a hot skillet. Next comes fresh shallots and garlic. That's a lot of garlic. Oh, I love my garlic. I do too. <laughs> Along with capers, a mixture of Italian herbs, Italian. and a splash of white wine. Now, here's one of the tricks. Okay. Our homemade chicken stock. Really? Okay, this you want. This is what really tenderizes the chicken. The dish is finished with lemon caper butter and plated with buttery herb angel hair pasta. Mm mm mm. Oh, that is delicious. Mm. All that garlic and butter, and then you get that little zesty lemon. Mm. Rather have Tim make the piccata? We'll take a drive out to the hill country and see what kicked up country food is all about at O'Brien. Somebody asked me, well, what, what's the best thing on the menu? And I said, all of it. It's really good. Time to heat things up in your kitchen. We're at the Goya Kitchens with the executive chef, Fernando Desa, making a delicious chili dish, right? All right, a white chicken and corn chili that is amazing. Yum, let's do it. All right, so we're gonna start with a little bit of Goya strawberry and organic olive oil. And I have to say, and I've said this before, this is my favorite all around olive oil. It's super good. Delicious good. and incredible bargain. So now we got the onions going on. We're gonna sweat them for a couple of seconds. Then after that, we're gonna add some Goya garlic. It's already chopped for you. A little bit of oregano. Yeah. Cumin. Mmm. Got a, a lot of good aromas going there. A little bit of cayenne to oh, spice it up a I little love bit. It. Yeah. yeah. We get ground chicken. Okay. And this ground chicken, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some goya adobo with pepper. Just season it right on there. Yeah. We're gonna add it to the pan. We're gonna add some goya tomato sauce. Goya pico de gallo. So it's a pico de gallo already made in a jar. Very convenient. You don't have to chop the onions, the tomatoes, the peppers. I love that. Then after that, our Goya chickpeas. Mm -hmm. Cook in a can. A little bit of corn, same way. Cook in a can, always consistent. We're gonna bring it to a boil. And we're gonna cook for half an hour to get a nice consistency. All right. And then ready to go. Mm. Good, right? Mm -hmm. That is really good. Nice heat, you see the tomato flavor. Oh, that's delicious, Super I love good. it. Thank you, we've got Thank the you. recipe online, goodtaste.tv. For more details about San Antonio restaurants, visit our friends at visitsanantonio.com. Coming up, wake up to a sensational strata from a mother-daughter duo who could write the book on breakfast and what they learned working together. It would be a comedy. <laughs> it would be a huge comedy. But next, the Enchilada Queen gives us the royal treatment with some out-of-this-world enchiladas from both sides of the border. There's a place for you at our table. Come right back. Cisco, at the heart of food and service. Welcome back. It's not every day you can say you met someone who stared down death and lived to tell about it. Our next story is about an inspiring woman who did just that and went on to create an enchilada empire. Get ready for some royal treatment, but forget the red carpet. The enchilada queen is rolling out something even better. Handcrafted enchiladas smothered in mouth-watering sauces like you've never seen before. Yeah, she's the queen. She is. She's definitely the enchilada queen. Sylvia Casadas is Texas royalty, all right. How did you get the title? Well, some food writer gave it to me. Yes, the enchilada queen. So and it's stuck. It's fun. I, I call myself the, uh, the, uh, the spokesperson for enchiladas. She could also be the spokesperson for perseverance and survival. You and I have known each other a long time. Absolutely. And the first time we met was back in 2011. Exactly. Uh, I could choke up asking you, a lot's happened to you. <laughs> a, a lot has happened to me, absolutely, yeah. It's been, a, it's been a hell of a ride. Six years ago, Sylvia's ex-boyfriend shot her and left her for dead. 
I remember one of the first thoughts I had in that instant was, oh my gosh, is this, is this how I'm going to die? And then the next thought was, this is a stupid way to die. <laughs> Sylvia chose to fight, to live, and to forgive. I put it in the rearview mirror. So that you could move on. So that I could move on. How has it changed you? Uh, there's a finite you know, number of days that we will be here, and so I look at it differently. So in a way, sometimes I think of it as a gift. Every day is a gift now. Every day is a gift. She took that gift and turned it into triumph, opening another restaurant and scoring a cookbook deal with a New York publishing company. Sylvia's Enchilada Kitchen rolls up all kinds of enchiladas from both sides of the border. 18 different kinds, loaded with chicken, beef, cheese, pork, crab, you name it. Each enchilada is perfectly paired with one of Sylvia's carefully curated and often colorful sauces. That Chicken is and a phenomenal. Bit of cream. Now why yeah. is that so different than any other tomatillo sauce well, I've ever had? Well, it's just fresh ingredients. One of Sylvia's secrets to success is right here, a wood-burning custom grill. Why mesquite? Because mesquite is what we grill on in South Texas where I grew up. Sylvia's tender and juicy beef fajitas are some of the best I've ever had. The fajitas are out of this world. The mesquite grilled quail is out of this world too. Um, really comforting, uh, good Tex-Mex, but not too fancy. Sylvia's roots run deep in the Rio Grande Valley. At the age of seven, her great-grandfather was snatched by Indians in Mexico. So your great-great-great-grandfather was yeah. kidnapped and then left behind once they yeah, crossed the Yeah, dropped off. Yeah, because they were, you know, they were being pursued. His descendant has changed the eating habits of an entire city the size of Houston. <laughs> I want to serve my customers the food I grew up on, prepared the way that we ate it in my mother's and grandmother's kitchen. That's exactly what you're going to get at Sylvia's. Her grandmother seasoned every single tortilla in her kitchen. So does Sylvia. I'm doing it the way my grandmother and my great-grandmother did them, yes. okay? So this is just a very old-fashioned, traditional way of making enchiladas. So every tortilla has flavor. Every tortilla has flavor. That flavor comes from a steeping handful of guajillo chilies and chilies de arbol, blending them, straining them, and then dipping each and every tortilla into that sauce. Everyone gets Every this? one. The, the sauce is kind of absorbed into the, oh, yeah. into the tortilla. You'll see the difference in the colors? Yes. It's details like this that set Sylvia apart. Her famous chili gravy is a delicious flavor explosion. I call it the iconic sauce of Texas. It's our chili gravy. Yeah, and, and it's not your everyday chili gravy. There's it is a lot not. of love that goes There's into There's a this. lot of love, a lot of work. Cumin seed, black peppercorn, garlic, chili powder, onions, ground beef, a roux, beef broth, and a whole lot of royal know-how. Wow, okay. that is fantastic. I was going to say super easy, but nope, I'm coming here. I'm not doing it at home. <laughs> One thing's for sure. If you love Tex-Mex, you're going to love it even more in the Enchilada Queen's kitchen. Everything she makes. Affordable wines in my wine finds. But next, fluffy pancakes and eggs worth bragging about. Good Taste will be right back. Good Taste with Tangie is brought to you in part by HEB. Ever feel like the world's moving just a little too fast? Then why not slow down and take a break for breakfast? With steaming hot coffee, and a giant stack of fluffy buttermilk pancakes, dripping with butter and sweet maple syrup. We come in every morning for breakfast. Clean my, oh, it's not here, but I cleaned my plate. If it's comfort food you're craving, this is where you'll find it, at the Buttermilk Cafe in New Braunfels. It's just all really, really good, good food. Are you got your hair all done and your makeup on? <laughs> Carol Irwin and her daughter Marcy captain this ship. It's obvious that a sense of humor is one of the ingredients that helps it sail along. 
this is my pirate ship. They're nothing but a bunch of pirates and criminals, and we're just all on the ship going together. So uh, behave. We all learn along the way. Or you're going way. over the ship. Buttermilk Cafe is brimming with all the nostalgic flavors of home, but with a little pizzazz thrown in. It reminds me of my hometown. The dining room feels like home. It's cozy, welcoming. How did you come upon the decision to do comfort food? I'm, I get hungry for it. I haven't found a place, and sometimes I don't always have the time at home to do comfort food. Real food. Yeah, yeah. real food, real food. You can't, you can't buy it in a box. Carol's restaurant resume is impressive and includes an award for San Antonio Chef of the Year. But she calls herself a late bloomer, raising a family first not attending culinary school until her mid-40s. And I made straight A's. I never made straight A's going through school <laughs> ever, but you know, they always tell you that the old people make the better grades. I don't know if we get uh, smarter or what. So do you think you were so good in culinary school because you were so smart, or do you think it was because this was something you were meant to do? I really think it was something I was meant to do, but I loved it. I loved to cook, loved, loved to eat. Love to create plate pr presentations, so uh, that's the artist in me. You can see that artistry in Carol's elevated approach to comfort food, like this mouth-watering meatloaf made from beef and pork and topped with a sweet and chunky tomato peach sauce. The popular New Orleans-style coastal breakfast starts with fresh gulf shrimp layered over grilled green chili cheese grits topped with a poached brown egg. A creamy, luscious lobster sauce brings it all together. The dish is garnished with tomato and green onions. Everything's freshly made. That's, it's, I don't think anything's frozen. After 20 years working at a large restaurant chain, Marcy teamed up with her mom. What have you learned from your mom? I could write several books would be the best way to put that. My mother is an amazing It would be a leader. comedy. <laughs> it would be a huge comedy. The two help each other at work and through the road bumps of life. We were both reading books on how to date. You know, go figure. <laughs> After 37 years of marriage, Carol found herself suddenly single. He married a woman with bigger teeth. That's not the case, but I know. There it is. <laughs> be. <laughs> <laughs> it's my colorful language. <laughs> she jokes about it now because all is well with all involved. Carol found new love and is enjoying a beautiful act two. Now it's a family affair with everyone pitching in to deliver this fabulous fare. Their breakfast strata is amazing, so good. One of Carol's favorite breakfast dishes is a simple strata. Think quiche with no crust. We use sourdough bread, but if you if you are a gluten issue, you can always use a gluten-free bread. Okay. Uh, or you don't even have to use bread at all. It's a versatile dish that can be dressed up any way you like. We're using bacon, tomatoes, green onions, and cheddar. It's all soaked with a quiche batter made of eggs, chicken stock, sour cream, and Carol's secret ingredient, mayonnaise. It all bakes for about 10 minutes. Okay, these turned out beautiful. See how souffléed they are? They're yes! Hey, I am a good cook. That tastes great. <laughs> if you say so yourself, right? <laughs> Thanks. Mm. See, that tastes good. Now you don't need lunch. Mm -mm. That's fantastic. Simple and delicious. Home style eats from the friendly folks at Buttermilk Cafe. Time for my wine finds, and even if you're dieting this month, you gotta splurge a little. Why not cheat with a tiny glass of wine, especially one that costs less than $13 a bottle. Up first though, a great little salad wine. This is the Billahot Cote de Rousson. This wine has beautiful citrus aromas. Think lemon, think grapefruit. It's round on the palate, but there's some nice acidity. This is a very fresh, bright wine. You're also going to get some hints of minerality, so think Oysters, this is a great seafood wine too. It's only $15.98 a bottle. Up next, the Josh Pinot Gris. Think Pinot Grigio. 
I'm a huge fan of all the Josh wines. The grapes are so carefully sourced, the wine expertly produced, and for the price, you can't beat them. This Pinot Gris is made in the beautiful, cool climate of the Columbia Valley in Washington State. I love the tropical flavors in this wine. A bit of pineapple and mango are in the mix. Crisp and just lovely. The Josh Pinot Gris is priced at $12.98 a bottle. All right, I saved a heck of a red wine find for last. This is the Columbia Crest Gold Cabernet. It too is from Washington State, a spot that's known for luscious smooth cabs. And since most of us are on a budget, especially this time of year, you're gonna love the price. This is only $12.98 a bottle. A great start for a great new year. Cheers, as always. I found all my wine right here at HEB. A relaxing weekend at the beautiful Houstonian Hotel and Spa could be yours. Details next. Click on goodtaste.tv and sign up right now for your chance to win an incredible two-night stay at the Houstonian Hotel. Also, dinner for two at the Houstonian's stunning new restaurant, Tribute. We love to hear from you. Please follow us on Facebook at Good Taste with Tangie, on Twitter at Tangie Patton, and Instagram at Good Taste TV. For all of this week's recipes or to sign up for our newsletter, you can check them all out on our website, goodtaste.tv. That's all our time for this week. We'll save you a seat for next week. Till then, cheers to good taste. Everybody, come and see Kevin's turn.